Don't shoot the cowboy with the guitar. What I saw him here last night, he plays the same. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Raunchy Talk. I'm your host, Kyle Martin. As always, we're coming at you live from Albuquerque's own Elephonic Studios. Mr. Jesse Corman's up in the booth, mixing it hot and mixing it fresh, folks. Today, my guest, a playwright, a composer, a filmmaker, a teacher, and what a phenomenally talented musician. Please welcome Mr. Casey Mraz. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, thank you so much for having Sir, me. Sir, welcome. So happy to be here. I'm happy to have you here. So honored to have you here. Okay, here we go. How did you get so damn musical? Would you please tell me? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's all practice, as you know, as any musician knows. It no is. one's born with it, you know. It just, uh, I mean, maybe some are. I'm not. I, it's, <laughs> yeah. a lot, it's a lot of no, practice. Me neither. A lot of time, you know. Um, I have a, a, a total devotion or love, affinity for musical instruments from all around the world. So I always, when I, I love traveling, when I travel places, I like to check out local music from that region. And I, I always like to buy instruments from different parts of the world and just kind of research them and, and just sounds, sounds, all about sounds, you know, different and sounds. And per the instruments you play, I'm reading your cultural diversity right there, I'll tell you <laughs> right now. My first memory of you is I walked into a club here in Albuquerque and I told you this. And you were, he was playing like three instruments in like 30 minutes. And I was like, fan? I knew right then. What, what is your favorite thing to play on stage? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I love, I probably, from performing on stage, I do love the accordion. I feel like it it cuts through, especially if I'm playing with a small band, with a big band, the sound of the accordion um, just can really cut through the drums, cut through the bass, and I, I feel like it's very expressive. So maybe if I had to pick one as a favorite, I'd probably say that one. You know, I, I love string instruments too, like guitar and charango, but I feel electricity when I'm playing that accordion, really. And it took me a long time to develop. That's not an easy one. That, is, that, that took a long time to develop skill well, in that. Well, your execution, and like you say, it just cuts right to your ear when you walk in and you hear those uh, notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. So as near as I can tell, Los Metamorfos, which I love that name, that is your band. Am I right about that's it, that? Yeah, it's my trio. Yeah. How mm -hmm. did that get to be a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we kind of started off as working with like some circus performers, uh, Gina Marie Shorten. And <laughs> I love it. Nicholas I love Fuentes. it. You got to love that. Go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, totally. And, and we were coming up with a name and um, we kind of started off as Metamorphos Collective and we were going to kind of try to do this kind of almost like... Um, What's that group? Uh, March 4th, March 4th marching band, you sure, know, yeah. like with maybe more of a little bit more of a Latin kind of feel, but do music with circus arts at the same time. Um, and we did a couple shows, but it, it didn't really completely pan out. Everyone was so busy. And so I just kind of had this vision of, you know what, let's just scale way back. Just a trio. We don't need like all kinds of, you know, performers and a big band. We'll just do a trio, me, a bassist and a drummer. And kind of thinking of that metamorphosis is like kind of always changing. You know, yes. I was trying to think of like some, a name that could be, um, that could imply that, you know, we're not sort of sticking to one style. That we can do this, we can do that, we can I borrow love here. love that, dude. Yeah, so that was the, the idea. Mm -hmm. That's right in my alley because when, like, when I play, I like to try to mix it up, so... Exactly. Kudos. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna move on now. Porter Draw. You play with that band sometimes, don't I you? I did for play a minute. For about I think about two years, maybe maybe. What was your role less. in that band? Can you talk about I that? I played band? mostly rhythm guitar. Um and um and and then towards towards my, the late my sorry, the sort of later half of my career with that group, uh, I started to kind of introduce the accordion into it, you know, yeah. in some places, kind of give it kind of a swampy kind of, sure. um, you know, zydeco feel in some places. Um, but mostly they, I, they brought me on to play rhythm guitar. I wrote a couple tunes for the group that we performed. Um, and then, and then life just got kind of busy and kind of crazy. And so I had to kind of step away because they, they were playing like all the time, I but it. I have much love for those guys, you know, always, always have, always will. And, sure. and Josh Gingrich, you know, I mean, he, he and I've been really good friends since, uh, since middle school. So yeah. that's kind of how, you know, like nice. he knew that he could rely on me to kind of step in, you know? And then I saw you playing with Justin McLaughlin and then you guys were playing again after the fact, New Mexico's bass player. Yeah. One of New Mexico's bass players. No, no offense, Donnie Tessa. <laughs> but uh, would you play with Justin still sometimes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Totally. For sure. In fact, Justin's I'm the doing a little bit of recording, and he's kind of stepping in some some bass, some upright for me. So uh, I'm just kind of doing it right now. Some, just some home recordings. But yeah. Justin's great guy to work with. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. You can play yeah. anything. I got to have yeah. him on the show. Justin. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So totally. the National Hispanic Cultural Center, what do you do for them? 
Yeah, so when I was talking before about the how the Metamorphos came out of the Circus Collective, that's kind of how it started, is there's a summer circus institute called Circo Latino, and uh, they were bringing in like circus artists from a lot of, a lot of them from Colombia, but other parts of uh, South America, and they hired me as their music director. So I would work with these kids um, in any, any age from eight, eight to 13, and just take them in and, and, and say, guys, this is your circus show. You're going to write all the music. You know, I'm here to help you. I'm here to guide you. But let's, you know, start with just one note. And they would, you know, sit at a piano for 20 minutes and come up with a, a three note phrase and be like, great, let's add the drums into it. You know, and we'll make these these songs, these pieces of music. So I've been doing that for 10 years, well, 11 years. And then this last summer, we had to move it all online, you know. Right. Sure. It was a big institute, you know, with uh, 60 kids and uh, about 40, you know, teaching artists. So it was like, there's a lot of people and... You're a special guy. Not everybody has that patience to sit down and be that person. I mean, we can all play and pick, but to sit down and try to teach somebody else, that's something else. Yeah, 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 totally. Well, I think what always was very inspirational for me is giving the, the students a lot of ownership, you know? And mm-hmm. it, it was, I'm not going to lie, the first couple of years, it was kind of like, it was kind of deer in the headlights. They didn't really know what to do. I didn't really know what to do. But after a few years, we started to get a rhythm. And then the kids would come back and they'd be going, I mean, some of them would be developing pieces of music all throughout the year sure. in their, while they're taking their private lessons right. and come back and go, I got four songs. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's you know, jam. let's put, let's, let's, let's arrange them. Let's put the, the horns to them. Let's put the drums to them. So I love it. We need more of that folks. We need more <laughs> to say, so you know, now I want to move on and I want to ask you active learning through opera. What uh, in the hell is that, sir? Uh, yeah, I did that. For, that was another thing I did for 10 years. And then I just got real busy and kind of stepped stepped away from it a couple of years ago. But then actually, when they moved it all online over the summer, I, I went back and did a session with them. But that was through the Santa Fe Opera. And that was a really interesting um, program. Well, it's still, it still is going. Um, but what they do is they take students, elementary school, middle school, high school. And, um, and so the students develop the story. They write the libretto for an original opera and they compose all the music. And there's like a sort wow. of system that we have of working. They were interested in me because I was not only a composer and a musician, musician, but have a master's degree in, in playwriting. So they were like, oh, this is great because you can help out with both sides. Sure. Most of the other teachers that worked through that um, that organization or through the Santa Fe Opera, that, that program with the Santa Fe Opera, came from either a music background or a theater background, you know. So that was really great. I had like 10 great years of working with students and they would come up with the most amazing ideas, you know. It's kind of like... Like Picasso said, you know, uh, I taught, I tried to train myself, you know, to paint like I did when I was a child kind of thing. You know, they would come up with these inspirational stories. Sure. And then we we had a very a few different kind of methods of helping them compose, but they'd basically break apart their 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 libretto, write it out, you know, to to a cadence, to a meter, to some sort of, you know, click using you know, with rhythm. And then we'd give them xylophones and be like, okay, now assign each syllable a note and make sure you can sing it. So you can't just go like, right. ding, ding, you know, because like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they would get crazy. They would get really, yeah, yeah. really experimental. But that's good because then that makes them think about it more in a practical sense, right? Practical sense, yeah, totally. So it's like you can do chrom- chromatic, you know, runs and you can get funky, but make sure that you can sing it. Right. Make sure you it's <laughs> can singable. the rest of the band hang with you at that point. <laughs> exactly, right. So that it, was man. really, that was really cool, yeah. Uh, okay, so now it is time for a thing that I like to call rock in a hard place. The ancient South American language of Quechua is thought to have originated in what country, sir? Oh, it's. Hmm. I think it's probably got to be Peru. Winner! I think you're the first person to guess it, right? <laughs> Correct. And the reason I bring that up, of course, is because you play a truly iconic Peruvian and Andean instrument known as the charango. Am I yeah. right about that? Yeah, the charango, yeah. How did that get it to be in your life? Yeah, so that was kind of working, you know... Um, you know, I've done the Circo Latino with the Spanish Cultural Center, but I've also I've composed music for plays that they've had there. I've worked with their education department. I, I was I was a sound tech there for a while. You know, running sound sure. for Global Kirky and everything. Um, and there was a group that came in from they may have very well been from Peru or from various countries there. And I saw this guy playing that you know that charango, and I just I, I was running sound, and I was just like totally mesmerized by it. So. 
I found one online, you know, bought one and um, and then, you know, bought another and then got one with a pickup and, you know, just a little bit, you know, kind sure. of building it up. Um, I bought a book, a Charango Method book, and I've made it through all the exercises. And now, like, I'm in the repertoire section where I've learned about half the pieces. But, you know, that was that's uh, that's a good I would say I've been working on that for 10 years, maybe maybe a little bit less, maybe like eight years. But that instrument, you know, I, I would one thing I really loved about it, too, is when I opened up the book and it's tough. It's tough to learn music from a book, for sure. Anybody knows that. Yes, it is. But it can be done if you're willing to, <laughs> to, to crack at it every day. But one of the first things that that book kind of said was that in order to play the charango, you have to like you have to be like one with it. You have to feel it, you know. And I was like, well, that's a great. I love I love that approach because like it's very rare you find a piano teacher that goes, OK, you know, now become one with the piano. Right. That's not what they're teaching skills. No, it's they a very teach, earthly yeah. approach, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this just seems, this feels spiritual. This feels mystical. This feels like this is something that's very uh, bigger than me. You know, there's an energy here. And so, uh, yeah, like, and then I, you know, in playing it, um, got to know a few other uh, people in town, like Kilko and Joseph uh, from Marakutanga, who mm-hmm. play it really well. And, uh, and I've just been studying it and trying to get better. And then I started writing some tunes on it, some of my own music on it, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's a truly, truly beautiful instrument. It's another sure. fun, cutting, iconic instrument. As soon as you hear it, you're like, you want, kind of want more, you know? Yeah, you? totally, totally. You play the guitar, you play the piano, you play that instrument. And now here recently, I discovered you playing the banjo. And, and you and I were talking a little bit about it. Can you talk about how the banjo became a part of your life, please? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess the way I kind of remember it is I was in my, you know, early 20s, maybe 22, 23, <laughs> just kind of looking around and kind of going, oh, man, there are so many really great, you know, cool cats in town that can just wail on the guitar. You know, I mean, the, I'll never be able to compete with them. These guys are just really good. And, uh, and so I was just kind of thinking, I was like, well, I want to get into bluegrass music anyways. And I think that maybe you should just pick up another instrument to have something else, you know? And, and, uh, I just immediately was drawn to the banjo and went and picked up a $70 banjo from Music Go Round, you know, and a book and was learning the role, the basic roles. And then, um, and then I had a really great opportunity with Trick Lock Theater Company, um, they, at the time, I was doing some set design and some sound design for them. And they said, hey, we're putting together this show. Um, it, it's called Black River Falling. We're going to produce it here in Albuquerque, and then we're going to tour it to Europe. And we would like to have a, a, a banjo player. You're a musician. Do you know any banjo players? And I was like, well, I'm learning. Can I play banjo in your show? You know, And, and if they were like, yeah, if you, know, if you want to, and of course. And so it was great. I got to write music for that show. Um, and then we got to tour Europe, did several performances here in, uh, yeah. in America and, or in America, in Albuquerque. And, um, so then that was like a whole couple years of my life where I had to be dedicated to the instrument like every day because sure. I had to be like on point for these performances yeah. and, you know, was, uh, sitting in with a few like old time groups and different people around town, just trying to learn, just trying to soak up, you know, country, bluegrass, old time folk music you know and in any way i can incorporate the banjo and so for those couple years it was kind of like the only thing i played really and um and then and then my my wife megan when we got together she played the cello and uh she just absolutely loved the sound of the banjo so we did a lot of recording doing some cello banjo music that was really great um yeah and then and then she unfortunately passed away uh, about a year and a half ago but um but uh ever since she passed i haven't really even touched the banjo until about a couple months ago i kind of pulled it out of the closet and was like i want to get back into this and so so i was super stoked when when you asked me to come down here and i was like let's 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 get some banjo guitar music it even means more to me that you would play it now that i asked you after you told me all that so absolutely and and i tell you the truth uh what a talented special person i feel like you are and he's going to share with us folks an original banjo tune so i give you sea of galilee by mr casey Mraz. Lord, my cup is empty Need something to quench my thirst I hear the lake is drying up Please let me get there first Throw me in. I'll plunge 
plunge my head in the water Wash away my sin But Jesus had twelve children And one who grew up to be The owner of a Chinese restaurant By the Sea of Galilee Take me to the Away my sins. Salvation here. And take me to the river. And throw me in. And plunge my head in the water. And wash away my sins. When I die, please toss my body in the ocean so I will sing. Studios. My name is Kyle Martin. Live long and prosper. Don't shoot the cowboy with the guitar. 